Yes, absolutely. He's speared him, if you will. Oh, hell yeah. Ah! Hey, how's it going? What's going on, guys? I'm crouching here, so if I look awkward, sorry, I'm lazy. But I'm going to put up my Christmas tree. That's why I'm in a, a funny spot. But I'm actually doing my October wrap-up now. So you may be asking yourself why the heck I'm putting up a Christmas tree. But um, honestly, this is late for me. Okay, I normally put this up on Halloween night, which is my anniversary, because I have a Tim Burton tree. It's very Halloween-y. So I'm going to start putting that up and just share with you all the amazing, absolutely ridiculous books that I read in October, because we did have the amazing Monster Mash, the readathon, hosted by Hannah Blackwell, of course. And I put it upon myself to try and black out the entire board of monsters, all with smutty novellas. <laughs> so I accomplished that goal and now it's my time to share. Okay. And I have some ridiculous ones to share with you. Some amazing five stars, some really bad ones, and then some in between. But I also read like two actual like real books that I'm not going to lie are probably some of my favorite books. One of them is actually one of my favorite books of all time, which by the way, you know me, or if you know me, that's saying a lot because I'm saying it beats the make games, all right? Is Caleb still my husband? He's my man. He's my fictional, just amazingness person ever who is my husband and also the love of my life. Yeah, but this book beats it, okay? I'm obsessed with it, and I apparently now have a fascination with clowns, which I used to hate, so that's going to be awkward in the future when I try to go into haunted houses, but hey, I guess I'll just be checking them out. But anyways, I need to go grab my decorations really quick and then we'll start putting up this bad boy and I'll just share all of my lovely stories with you that you probably don't really want to read or maybe hear about, but I'm going to share nonetheless. Okay, so let's go. All right, so I'm back. I have all my stuff. Yes, this is Christmas. I have a very weird style. Okay, you guys, so you're gonna you're gonna see my weirdness come out. I've told you that I'm weird, okay? But I have my white tree already set up. It has colored lights. I don't know if you can really tell, but I kind of do more of a nightmare before Christmas thing and kind of more of a monstrous, scary, sort of cute tree. That's my style. And it honestly, actually kind of reflects the two books that I actually read this month. So I'll talk about the two books first and then we'll go into the novellas, which by the way, I have everything in chapters, so if you only want to hear the books, you don't want to hear about the crazy ass novellas that I read, feel free to like skip around. Or if you're just like, Maggie, I really don't want to hear about spiders getting on with a chick. Hey, I totally understand. All right, you can just move on. All right. So just so you know, I have chapters linked down below or you can just jump ahead in the video. Anyways, before I get into my two books here, why don't I kind of open this stuff up? This is just like a really cheap snow skirt that I put under. I add like other little things on top of it to make it look not so cheap, but y'all don't really care about that. But for instance, I add monster feet to my tree. I make my tree basically a monster. That's just, you know, that's my vibe. But again, this is more of a nightmare before Christmas theme. So I've made things in the past that I put under here. Like this is actually something I can use for presents. I made like a little zero thing for when I get my husband like shirts or socks or whatever. So um, I have this that I'm definitely gonna put under there. I'm wondering if maybe I should like make a little video on how I did this, cause I know, I know a lot of people like it. I get a lot of comments on it. So maybe I'll put that on like my Patreon or something, how to make this. And then I also have some other things that I'll show you guys later. Basically Haunted Mansion, which I talk about all the time, but the bows that they do outside, I made out of duct tape. So you can use them outside yourself in your own home or like me on your Christmas tree. So. I don't know, I'm still thinking about that, but maybe I'll do a video on my Patreon for that stuff if y'all are interested. But anyways, let's get into the goods. Mm. So talking about the books here, I read only really like two books. If you really think about it, I didn't read a lot. I was very stressed, a lot happened in the month, but I read two actual books and I was very lucky. Both of them are amazing freaking reads. Both of them I highly recommend. One is literally my new favorite book. I know I will reread it and I don't really reread stuff often, but it's almost like a comfort book for me, which is funny because it's like really gory and kind of obscene, but it's all done in a playful way. So it just makes me happy. It's like my style of cozy. Cozy for me doesn't really mean the same thing as everybody else. I have this weird obsession with like gore 
my husband always makes fun of me because my eyes get really, really bright when I watch like the new Hellboy and there's all those monsters like ripping people apart. I enjoy it so much. But anyways, enough jib jab in here. So I have a bunch of little stuffed animals of the different characters that I'll put on later. But talking about the books, the two that I read, I'll link both of them below. They're both on Kindle Unlimited. One of them, uh, well actually both of them now, I've actually bought. So the first one I'll talk about, I guess is my lesser one, but it's still like four and a half stars for me. I'm obsessed with it. It's called Cute But Psycho. I talked about this one before in one of my previous videos. But basically, the whole storyline of it, there is a lot of heat. There's definitely so It's more of a smutty romance. If you think back to my previous videos, definitely a plot. But there's still a lot of heat within it, more on the smutty side, not necessarily spicy. I would say definitely you get the goods, if you know what I'm saying. But essentially, we have a girl who she is kind of newly awakened to the fact that she's actually a monster. And she goes into this asylum that has a ton of the most dangerous monsters in the world and the doctors are trying to convince them that they're actually just people, they're not really monsters. But as you can imagine, because this is a monster book that's very great to read in October, but the, the scientists are basically like evil and they're doing terrible things to them. So of course the monsters want out and they kind of go on a rampage and they all meet this chick and of course they're all obsessed with her. So, you know, you're gonna move through a process of them annihilating the asylum and um, annihilating each other, basically. <laughs> but it's very well written, honestly, for I could totally see this book being like truly published. I could see a publisher really enjoying it. It's very well written. It's very engaging. You're moving through. It was holding my attention. I didn't want to skip around. It was holding my attention. There's a couple little bits where I feel like it was a little bit long. We could have like shortened it a little bit, but majority of the time, absolutely obsessed with it. The way that she writes and the way that she developed her characters are amazing. And it's so different from what I've seen with other monsters. It's not the style of book, you guys, where they're taking a monster that's classically scary and they're kind of turning it more into this soft, dreamy sort of thing. It's definitely playing into the fact that they're monsters. They do bad crap, all right? But they each have very, different personalities. They don't all feel muddled together and like they're the same thing. The author really spent the time of actually developing each personality. My favorite, by the way, surprisingly, is not the vampire. He's great in his own way. He's fantastic. He's a serial killer, expected for a vampire. But I actually was obsessed with the snake. His, his name's Baz. His introduction, honestly, just the introduction alone of his character was so good. It's so fun. This is like the, like I was saying, it's obscene and has those horror qualities, but it's playful at the same time. Like I'm, I'm going to ruin this little sequence. So if you want to skip ahead a little bit, you can, but the introduction to his character, basically he's in an insane asylum. He doesn't believe that he's insane, but he's very kind of like this happy sort of monster, the most dangerous one in the asylum, funnily enough, but he basically, he has a tendency to, you know, kill the patients or the nurses and things like that. But he likes to dance around with the corpses. So you're introduced to him dancing with a corpse and basically singing Dean Martin. He's into the Rat Pack and then he's obsessed with, with his fashion. He's just fun, man. His introduction was so great. Caught me off guard. Was not expecting that for a monster. So all I'm saying is that I highly recommend it. I'm giving it four and a half stars. The only little half star that I'm taking off really has to do with some of the stuff I felt we could have shortened a little bit, but I still enjoyed myself through the entire thing, which this is a series, by the way, but it's fun. The first sentence, man, I mean, she's literally talking about how she's staring at bodies on meat hooks. Okay, I'm in, man. That's the goriness I'm looking for, you guys. So if you're looking for like a gory, dark romance that's still on the playful side, Cupid Psycho's for you. Okay. So, moving on from there, these are the bows that I'm talking about, by the way, that maybe I'll do a little tutorial on, like, how to make them, but they're from the Haunted Mansion, so you can hang them, like, outside or on your tree, which I do, you know? Add a little Jack Skellington vibes. But anywho, I have a bunch of ornaments. They're like spider webs and things like that. So again, playing into the Nightmare Before Christmas thing. And I also have pumpkins and bats and eyeballs and things like that. 
So those are your ornament. Well, okay. I can't find everything. Oh well. Let's make it work moment. Alright, creepy cloth. I'm gonna put that on. Normally I have like green and purple, like almost neon tool, but uh, I can't find it. It apparently is still in my storage unit. So, I'm just gonna take my creepy cloth from Halloween and just wrap it around like garland. Alright, let's put on some striped stuff too. So, speaking of my next book, the next one is literally like my favorite book of all time now. <laughs> but it's called Circus Creeps. And this was one I got super excited about when I found it, mainly because it has clowns and I don't like clowns. So I like to read things that scare me, but essentially this one's another Why Choose. It's really, really good. Again, highly recommend. It's obscene in a way where you're still doing the horror, but it's still very, very freaking playful. So you're gonna have a lot of scenes that are kind of grotesque, especially in the beginning. It does actually include grape, but, the author doesn't do it in a way where she's just trying to shock you. It's not a shock value sort of thing. It actually adds to the story. It's very, very brief and you get a nice outcome at the end, if you will. But the whole storyline, it does, it is more on the smutty romance side of things. There is a plot, but you have a lot of heat. But it's one of those things where you need to be the style of person like the last book where you're into that horror, really gory sort of playful stuff. The nice thing is you still have these monsters that are definitely insane, but there's no sort of issue when it comes to consent. It's actually like in the book, it's consent and sexy for all of the monsters. And each of them again, very well written characters. It was, they're each so incredibly distinct. My favorite were the clowns. Their names Riff and Raff, which props to the author, perfect name setup. But they're Incubus twins and they're clowns. And they have this quality where they're almost like Siamese cats. And you can see that in just the way that it's written, the way that they speak, the way that they walk, they're acrobatists, plus a lot of other things. But they're just fun. They're, t they're totally a ton of fun. And then there's other characters where you have one that more has like a disturbed sort of past. So he's very gruff. He seems like your biggest sort of scariest monster, but he's actually really tender. And then like your main guy, he's actually, basically he's the devil, you can think of it, but that's not the name that they give him. But he's like this shadow monster thing. And he's by along with our um, kind of beastie sort of guy. And they each all have different body types too. It's not all like the big gruff guy who all are just massive, all that jazz. They're very clearly different type of men or monsters with very different sort of personalities that you kind of get to play around with as you're reading it. And our girl, she is very much a strong female character love her she's fantastic but the whole book again incredibly written it has so much like engaging sort of sentence structures and the way that the chapters are set up it makes you want to keep reading i didn't find any sort of dull moment at all i totally would have honestly read it in one sitting but i couldn't because of work <laughs> but it's really good it just came out to her second book because it, I believe it's a duology. It's coming out December 30th. I'm going to buy this stuff. I'm telling you right now, I read it on Kindle Unlimited, but I want to support the author. I want to make sure she can get as much money as she can. I'm totally going to reread it. I honestly think I'm going to annotate it, which I'm not an annotator. November is my first month, first month that I'm going to start annotating. So I highly recommend it, you guys. It's good. It's really good. Again, you need to be that type of person where you can read more disturbing, gory content and kind of find that playfulness within it. It can kind of make you smile. Otherwise, you're probably gonna be like, oh my God, this is way too much, but it's good. That's all I'm saying. It's really, really good. Now moving on to the novellas here. I'm gonna start adding my little characters. <coughs> Sorry about the sickness, but my novellas. All of these are from the Monster Mash Readathon. So I had my goal set of blacking out the board by reading a bunch of smutty novellas of various monsters. Okay, so I was looking obviously more for the comedic stuff, but I was trying to hit a goal. So some of this is not great, okay, admittedly, but I also found some gems. All right, so the first one that I actually read, which by the way, I did shorts for all of these because I was trying to just learn that. So if you wanna see details on every book, feel free to check out my shorts. But the first one that I read, what is this? 
I was so excited about this. It's not really an October read, but it's fantastic nonetheless, very much a monster. But essentially what you have is you have this, basically what used to be kind of a statue that because of an earthquake and a tsunami, it basically overtook a power plant and then all of that energy converted it into a monster. And you're reading about a story of these guys. It's, it's a gay storyline, by the way. But you're reading these guys who are at a beach and, you know, they want a little private time. So they go into the ocean and they're doing their business. And <laughs> this thing basically smells what's going on. You know, like how a shark gets one drop of blood from like five miles away and they know exactly where you are. It's like that. And then it basically comes over and just annihilates this guy's ass. Okay, like it's, he goes right through him, man. Like he, mm, in half, right away, okay? The ending, I'm not really giving it away because if you do wanna read it, it's great, honestly, I think it'd be a great weird ass romance book club one, but it essentially, at the end, has a twist that I wasn't expecting, so that was fun, but it's written in a way that's, it's fun, it's meant to be comedic, so if you're into comedic smut, Highly recommend the the fact the way that the monster was created and how he attacks the gentleman. Top notch, five stars. Okay, easy. Now the next one that I read, I don't remember what day it was. Doesn't really matter. But it was Fat for the Mothman. This was another gem. Honestly, hilarious. I feel like it rivals my Mantis book. But essentially, you have this doctor who she's a cryptozoologist, so she studies cryptids, of course, in the most intimate fashion. She's very passionate about her work. And she's seeking out the Mothman in this. This is a series, so you can enjoy all the other cryptids if you want. But essentially, she's going after the Mothman along with these two other guys who are in search of it. She finds it immediately. It's just like, hey man, let's get down. <laughs> and they do. And there's ooze. What I can't remember what they called it. It reminded me of Ghostbusters. Ectoplasm that splats on a window. I could literally hear it when that happened. But essentially, she gets it on with the Mothman right away. He has some very interesting parts, let's say, the what his body can do to adapt for both male or female species is quite interesting, <laughs> you know? And he can take multiple partners at multiple times because his body instantaneously adapts. But the whole thing is literally like a raunchy, smutty mess. This is the perfect explanation of a comedic, smutty little novella. It's hilarious. I want to read the other ones. I want to check out Bigfoot. I'm sure there's other ones like The Creature Under, uh, Creature of Black Lagoon, things like that. I need to check those out because this was so flippin' funny. I highly recommend it. We actually read it on the Weird Ass Romance Book Club because it's 12 pages, you guys, you know? So if you're feeling frisky and you're feeling like laughing or just kind of having your face being like, someone wrote this, someone seriously wrote this, this is a great book for you, <laughs> okay? It's hilarious. It's another one that I gave five stars personally. Speaking about the book club, the other one that we read was Seduced by the Pumpkin King, which this was surprisingly something I thought was gonna be like pure smut. I wasn't expecting it to actually be comedic or anything. And to be honest, it really wasn't, but it had way more of a storyline than I expected. I'm really not gonna go through the whole thing. Again, I have those shorts if you wanna check it out, but it actually was sweeter than what I was kind of initially expecting, but it kind of just abruptly ends. So be aware of that. But it was kind of a fun little read. It was nice, like it's not sweet, okay? He is a monster for sure, and the stuff that he does is definitely evident of that. But it's kind of cute, you know? So next year, if you're feeling frisky, feeling like you want kind of a sweet, kind of, not really scary, but you know, a little bit of the horror vibe, that could be a book for you. I'm giving it more of like a four star sort of rating, but that's what we read for our book club for October. Some other ones that I'm not really gonna like go in depth with because they weren't super great was it was like the Sex with Monsters series. I read the Incubus, the Gorgon, and the Minotaur one. And it's basically you have a sex worker and she's trying to pay her bills and everything. So she goes into being a sex worker for monsters and each of the books is the various monsters, but it's not comedic at all. It's really just mere, purely like your smutty little novella. She walks away at the end. There's literally no relationship built at all. So it's not really truly a romance. It's really smut, but they were just kind of okay for me because there wasn't any really comedic quality. There wasn't really any plot, but that's, that's kind of on me because smut's not really meant to have a plot. Okay. So if you're looking for a quick read and you want more of that smutty vibe with monsters, 
feel free to go check those out. But I kind of just gave it a three star because I didn't really get much out of it, you know? Speaking of ones I didn't really get anything out of, there's this author that I see everywhere, Adrian Blue. She has a ton of stuff and she's very hit or miss. One of them I read was The Snake. It was just bestiality, don't recommend it. But there was another one called The Spider. Okay, and I'm terrified of spiders. So I went in knowing that this was gonna be creepy and it's meant to have a horror element. And boy, does it. It was honestly probably out of all of them, the creepiest for me because I hate snakes. But it also was like so enjoyable because of that because she really leaned into it. Like the whole like scuttering and things like that. The webs, how eggs hatch. It's basically this chick living in a world where she knows that the paranormal exists. She knows that these spiders exist, but she's trying to get away from these werewolves. So she goes through the cave and when she gets in there, there's a ton of spiders, but I'm happy to say she's monogamous with this one spider. But when they, you know, do their thing or whatever, they get to the end and he lays eggs in her and she basically like immediately, uh, gives birth to him. This is the first time I've seen this and I'm so disturbed by it still because the visual, but she gives birth to the spiders. And if you've ever seen that, it's basically a bunch of them hatch all at once, just sliding out of those eggs. It wasn't about that she liked when the eggs went in. It's she liked when they hatched and the, her baby spiders came out of her. Mm -mm. Nope, nope. I was literally in the car of my job, just like, oh my God. Like I was dying inside. It would, sorry, uh, you probably didn't need to know that, but um, you're watching me. So you know that I spoil stuff like that. Yeah, gave that four stars. I'd recommend it actually, if you like being creeped out during a book. That was fantastic if you hate spiders. But anyways, moving on. Let's add some eyeballs, baby. But speaking of those babies and her enjoying them coming out, there's another book. This one, honestly, was disturbing in the sense that, like, ugh, gross. But it was about a pumpkin. The girl's name was Maggie. So, of course, I read it, okay? But essentially, there's this pumpkin that she carves, turns it into, like, a guy as a Halloween decoration, okay? And it basically comes to life. She doesn't want kids to smash it at the end of the Halloween night, so she brings it in on the couch. He watches a movie with her. He's not alive yet, okay? But he suddenly comes alive and um, she's had some wine, but she's not frisky at all. So that's the key thing with this one that really disturbed me. There is no consent, okay? It's not dubious consent. There's just no consent. Does, you know, she like it? She likes the feeling, but she's like very clearly stating that she does not want this to happen. So, huh. but there was a little bit of a saving grace there. Like he has vines and everything guys. And it talks about like when he does his thing. Okay. He is a pumpkin. All right. Remember pumpkins do have seeds. Okay. So that was a part of it. She had a descended stomach, which is one of the, like the worst phrases that I have ever heard in existence. I hate that. I hate that visual, but, um, he has pumpkin seeds and he has the ooey gooey guts from being a pumpkin. Like that's his, you know, that's his stuff. They describe it as ooey gooey and just nastiness. Ugh. That is so disgusting. I am still like deeply mad that, that I read that. But the saving grace of all of it is she woke up in the morning because she does have seeds in her. She wakes up and she sees that she gave birth to a bunch of tiny pumpkins. So it just made me think of Bo Burnham saying of tiny pumpkins, white woman's Instagram. So I did laugh at that, but the rest of it, the entire time I was just pushing myself through it. Don't recommend it, especially cause it's non-consent, but the tiny pumpkins did make up for it all, but I'm not gonna lie. Let's actually just sit and chat about books uninterrupt uninterrupted for a sec. So I still have, I think like six left. I did read quite a bit of novellas. Um, the, there's two I'm not really gonna go into detail about. Again, they weren't super great. Like I told you, there's definitely a lot that were wet. And these two kind of were like that for me. They weren't really comedic. They were really just purely smut. They still had the monsters. So they still had that fantasy sort of element. But one was like Ogres in the Catacombs, again, Definitely a consent issue, but essentially we have a girl who's in Paris and she meets this guy who she thinks is cute 
and he's telling her how he could take her through the catacombs and she's really interested in it at first but then when she gets under there basically she's kind of creeped out and he's kind of telling her these tales about these ogres and all this stuff but he still seems very flirty but once she actually gets in there there really are ogres he's just a guy that basically lures chicks into it and she very much really does not want the stuff to happen she ends up liking it but again it's really not consent or dubious consent so don't really recommend it. The other one, uh, this was Ganged by the Trolls, I think it was called. It was, honestly, I was having trouble finding something for the, I think it was Orcs. Yeah, I thought it was Orcs. Turns out there are Trolls. Trolls was in the title, but um, my dumb ass apparently just could not put two and two together. I don't know, um, but it is what it is. I counted it for it. But essentially, you just have a chick who wants to go to war, so she takes a potion to try and look like a man, but it ends up just making her look more like a woman, and a very voluptuous sexual woman. And she comes across a bridge where she needs to cross, and there's trolls. She's into it, so at least there's consent there, but it really, again, was just pure smut, so. Don't really recommend that. Okay. But one that I actually did end up liking, and it apparently is a series, and this was kind of almost like a little novella, almost bonus material sort of vibes. It was called Hell House Halloween, and I think Hell House is the actual series. It is another Why Choose, of course. I have a lot of Why Choose that I've read this year. But this was almost more like The Seven Deadly Sins and then also The Devil, so I got a couple squares for this for the Monster Mash readathon. But this one was kind of fun in the sense of you could kind of see before they would even say it who each character was in regards to what sin they represented. So that was kind of fun. Again, very smutty, not comedic at all, but you could tell that there was a storyline there. Again, this was more of like bonus material. So it's kind of something where if you read the synopsis of it, and you're interested in the series, you need to read the series first because this isn't like a prequel. It kind of happens right in the middle and it does give something very important away about one of the characters, so I won't say it, but it actually was really interesting. It was, it was really neat. So I might actually read that series. I would recommend you go check it out, see if the synopsis kind of fits your vibes because it does sound like there's a plot. So it's a smutty romance for sure, but there was quite, quite a bit of heat in there. And it sounds like there's multiple girls, multiple guys. So there's quite a few romances going on, if you will. But that one was good. I gave that like kind of four stars. Again, not comedic. So that's kind of hard to get for me. I'm not, I don't give four and five stars very often, unless it's very comedic. I love comedic smut. But anyways, let's get into the last four here. So there's a little sweet, a little crazy, a little serious, and then just crap. So I'll start with the crap, all right? But basically there was this one that I thought I was gonna black out the entire board. I wanted to read it with you guys because I thought it was gonna be utter insanity. It's since then, I swear to God it was on there before because that's how I got it on my KU, but it is wiped from the internet. So I was kind of like, whoa what the heck did she do to get wiped from the internet? You know, it's called Monster Milking Motel. I mean, come on, with a name like that, I thought this was gonna be a comedic gem. I really, really freaking did. But it turns out that it's just about a werewolf. Literally, that's it. The synopsis talks about how you basically go through this thrift store and you have like kind of like a, almost like a speakeasy. There's like a hidden door. You go through it and there's a bunch of monsters in there and there's like a gangbang area. There's glory holes. All of this crazy stuff, right? Where I'm like, this has got to be comedic. This has got to be a bunch of different monsters. I could probably black out this goddamn board. She's with a werewolf the entire time. Like it's, I was angry, to say the least. I feel gypped, and that one felt like such clickbait, man. So I basically DNF'd it. I read, I don't even know if I got halfway through it, but it was just, I don't know, it was smut. It was pure smut, at least to where I was. So I would say I don't recommend it, but you literally can't find it anywhere. So y'all don't really need to worry about that one, okay? But anyways, let me mark that off my list. Let's go into this one. So I actually read an official horror 
book or novella. It had nothing really to do with romance. There definitely was some intimate scenes, but this was pure horror. And it was called Splatterpunk, I think is what it's called. So it's meant to kind of be like this gross, gory horror. But I read one of the novellas. It was, I mean, it's basically a unicorn. It's a horse that had, you know, a birth defect. And it basically had this piece of pointy cartilage on his head, basically making him a real life unicorn. And he had sharp pointy teeth like a monster, but it was just a horse and it basically wasn't broken. So he was kind of an angry horse, which is understandable given everything. But <laughs> this farmer, who's the narrator by the way, this was actually kind of neat, I have to say this. The narrator is basically, best way to put it because it will immediately put the accent in your head, he's basically a hick farmer. Okay, and that's how it's written. You have this accent so clearly there through the narration. It's great. That in and of itself just gives it a vibe. Okay, but essentially he's trying to make money. He takes his unicorn dude, goes into business with this other guy, and allows the city slickers to uh, come down and pleasure themselves on the horse's horn. Is there definitely some animal cruelty in this? Oh, hell yeah. Yes, absolutely. But the unicorn gets its payback, or payback? He gets his revenge. That's basically what I'm getting at here. And the basically the farmer lets him loose because he's like, oh my God, how could I be doing this to this innocent creature? And he goes after it. One of the guys is literally stuck on his forehead on the horn. He can't come off because the horn's basically like he's, he's gone through him and he's speared him, if you will. Okay, so he's stuck there. There's blood and fecal matter kind of like coming out and he's just kind of running around like a horse does and the legs are kicking of the guy and his body's just like waving everywhere he's going after other dudes he's biting their ass cheeks off because he's got those pointy teeth it was a lot man and then they go to court you know and stuff like that but it it was interesting okay it was it was unique i don't know what to rate it because that was like my first horror especially first splatterpunk was there some gross quality? Yeah. Was there definitely a lot of blood? Oh, hell yeah. It's meant to be shocking. This is like an obscene novella that's meant to be shocking, where the books that I read, like Circus Creeps, is obscene in a playful manner. So, this one was kind of hard to read. I'm not gonna lie. It was kind of hard to read, but I did it. Um, I'm proud of myself for going outside the romance genre. Okay, I'm gonna say it. I'm proud of myself read that one. But the next one, I'll do the like kind of comedic one and then I'll do the sweet one last because that was actually my last book. But the, um, one of the books that I read towards the end, which I honestly should have read at the beginning, was Monster Mash. This was by Latrexa Nova. So she has this whole series, 13 Kings of Halloween, bunch of different monsters. And then Monster Mash is at the very end where we literally have a witch and she has all of these Halloween decorations. She's throwing a Halloween party and no one comes. And basically they all come to life. And the thing that was fantastic about this is Latrexa, like she understands like the dialogue Chef's freaking kiss, babe. It was hilarious. At least in the beginning, the first half, three quarters of it is really, really freaking funny because she's going through all of these different monsters. Again, they were decorations, but there was like pumpkins with vines, there was spiders, there was Frankenstein, there was Dracula, there was witches, there was the devil, there was ghosts, there was tons of stuff. Okay, and, it, and they really played into those characters. Like there was one point where Dracula I think he says something like, I won't do suck your kid. It just made me double over laughing because that's the accent that I heard. It was like that classic sort of just joke of a vampire. It was hilarious. And the things that like the ghost would say, the pumpkin would say, the Frankenstein, it was just, it was a comedic masterpiece as far as dialogue goes. Okay. And our witch had a lot of fun, very consensual. So that's nice. I appreciate that. But then once the devil basically comes, that's when it kind of turns into like real smut. It's more like serious smut where there's no comedic element anymore. It's just kind of smut. So basically the last quarter to half of it, I was kind of just like, eh, I could care less. But the beginning of it, super freaking solid. So I gave it like a four star because the dialogue was just so on point. But the last part of it is more just bleh for me, okay? Okay. But 
the very last book that I read. This one was not spicy or smutty whatsoever. I was looking for a gargoyle. I was struggling to find a gargoyle novella. The one that I picked up, I was very pleasantly surprised by. It, it's called Windswept. I do recommend it. I gave it four stars. It's literally, there's no spice whatsoever. I think they kiss and that's it. It's very sweet. And the story within it is actually pretty darn good. Like we have a girl, she goes through some pretty heavy stuff. Some heavy stuff does happen within such a short little story. But we have a girl who is very strong, very feminine. She's basically, you could think of her like a nurse and she's going to help her sister like deliver her baby. But there's a storm, like a massively super bad storm. It's snowing and there's a gargoyle who's basically able to fly through the wind and whatnot. And he sees this girl, he runs into her actually, and she tells him how she's trying to basically get to her sister, help deliver the baby. She got a really bad letter that her sister's struggling and the gargoyle ends up helping her and flying her there because she literally, she was gonna die in the snow basically, okay? So that's how they meet. Their meet cute is really sweet. It's very genuine, very much a romance. And they have this really gentle sort of blossoming of their romance within this story. So it is super, super cute. I do recommend it. I gave it four stars. Definitely, like I said, there there's a part that's sad and you feel it. The author wrote it very, very well. You feel those emotions. You already like so quickly feel for the characters in this book and you fall in love with the gargoyle really quick because he's just a sweet little cinnamon roll for a gargoyle. So that's really nice. But the author did a great job at being able to get you to just relate and just really sympathize for the characters immediately. She did a phenomenal job with that. So it's fun. I'd recommend it, even if you do it for like Christmas, cause it is, you know, snowy. I mean, it's a blizzard, but yeah, it, that's probably a better time to read it than Halloween. But I was very pleasantly surprised. I was happy to end on a good note. I started high with this, and then I ended on a very sweet romantic note with Windswept. So, I was pleasantly surprised. I literally read 16 novellas for the Monster Mash readathon. So surprised I read that much. In 10 days, by the way, that was a lot. And then I only read two books after that, but that's okay because they were phenomenal. But anyways, those are my books. I still have a little bit left of my Halloween decorations. So I will share with you. If you want to jump off, totally understand. But I'm gonna share my other stuff that I have with you guys, okay? So I need to put my bows on. And then I need to put my skirt and then my little zero dude. I love this thing. I know it's stupid, but I literally use Dollar Tree materials and I love this thing. I think it's so cute. I made a bunch of different ones. I had like a Sally and a, and a Oogie Boogie and a Jack and things like that, but I gave those away. But lastly, what I want to show you guys, because I am this chick, I'm obsessed with Tim Burton, hence why the readathon on my Patreon was Tim Burton themed for Halloween. But I made these a couple years ago is from Batman Returns. These are basically like my tree sentinels, okay? I got my penguins with their torpedoes on their back because that's festive and I love them. They're amazing. They're so fun. This one literally has like a camera on his eye. I love these guys. They're my, one of my favorite things that I've ever made. So I need to set up the skirt, the bottom of my tree, put on my bows, and then we can call it a day. So let me do that real quick. That's my tree. I hope you guys like it. I think it really uh, fits me. Definitely shows you that I'm, I'm weird. I'm abnormal, if you will. I'm a huge Tim Burton fan, so I like to express that during the holidays, I guess. But that's it. Those are all the books that I read or all the novellas, really. November is gonna be fun. I have a lot of books that I'm actually trying to read. A lot of very long books, so we'll, we'll see how much I get through. But I wanted to say one more thing. I haven't really like really marketed or really put out there about my Patreon because I'm still very much learning it, but they just put out something new where you can, it's basically like a free membership. So I think, 
if any of you are willing to test this out, I'd appreciate it. But I think you can go on there and you can hit, you'd like the free membership and then anything that I kind of post that I say everyone has access to, you should be able to see it. It shouldn't just be like one post and then everything else is blurred out. So if any of you wanna try that out and let me know, I'd really appreciate it. I'll leave a link down below. But I am still very much learning Patreon. I'm trying to be very transparent about that. But I was thinking, like I mentioned in the beginning, my Zero and then also like my bows, my Haunted Mansion Nightmare Before Christmas bows. I was thinking that I could maybe put like a video or videos on my Patreon and maybe I could do access for some of it at least for everybody. Um, and then if you guys wanna make those, you can. They're really not hard. A lot of this stuff is it's basically like duct tape, wire, or things from the Dollar Tree. But I also have another one. I don't know which ones I would make free and which one I would have for the paid tier. But there's one other thing I wanna show you. I'm sorry, I'm normally not a person who likes to like show off their art and stuff, because I don't know, I, I studied science, so I still have a hard time seeing myself as an artist, but I actually have this really cool thing. I'm obsessed with it. Again, Nightmare Before Christmas, but you know the wreath that like eats people? Very festive. I actually have a thing that I made. I made the wreath and I can actually make this a video for you guys. So I have two here, but essentially this is it folded up. But if you guys want to learn how to make this, I have the wreath from Nightmare Before Christmas where he's like basically throwing ornaments at you. I don't know how well you can see this. I hang this over my archway and then I have like basically the arms that I wrapped your classic sort of lights around and those extend out and around my arch. So I have this. It also lights up. Where is the thing? I love this thing so much. I love creepy, weird stuff. That's just who I am as a person. So I have this one, and I actually have another one. This was the first one I ever made. I actually sold these a couple years ago. I made a couple, so I sold some over on my Etsy. But they're just fun. Again, this is like all Dollar Tree materials except for some foam sheets. So if y'all want a video, you let me know. Again, I'll maybe make some of it free and then some paid because I don't want my paid people to feel like they're getting gypped. But I do love the idea that I can still make a little community over there for people who just maybe want a free membership. So you don't have access to everything, but I could still like share stuff. You could maybe still like be a part of polls. I'm even playing around with like, if you want to be on the discord and we can do various different things, you know, maybe we'll do movie nights, maybe we'll do reading sprints. Again, I don't know which I'll, I'll make paid stuff and what stuff I'll make free, but I kind of want to test it out since Patreon's doing that now. I really like that idea, you know? I think I've said it before. I have a hard time charging people stuff. I'm much more of a giver, but I really just like, I'm in it for like the friends and the cool things that we can do together. So if you wanna support me, I have a paid tier, but I am looking into how I can kind of utilize the free community feature is basically what I'm getting at. So if you're still around listening to me talk right now, you are a sweetheart. Thank you very, very much. But anyways, that's it. That's the video. Again, please let me know if you guys for Patreon would like to see how to make this or the little like zero packages or Nightmare Before Christmas packages like presents and the bows. Otherwise, I will just catch you guys next week. All right, bye.